Hey, thanks for joining us on today's Infinity Matrix live stream. Please consider this our gift to you as an exploration into the spiritual realm, the universal architecture of infinite possibilities. Here we teach, explore, experiment in order to share with you the secrets of the universe and its abundance of life-changing knowledge. Please remember to click subscribe and ring that bell to stay up to date with all of our continuing content. All right. So the past does not equal the future. That's what I've been told. I mean, how could it possibly when there's always a steady stream of presence unwrapping in between them? In today's live stream, we open up the pages of what you consider to be your life story. For some of you, we'll be ripping those pages out. And for others, <laughs> we'll get lost in the romance of the theme while the words, phrases, and sentences bring to life an epic saga. And by the end of this episode, you will have at your fingertips everything you need to write or rewrite your never-ending story. You know. <clears throat> Have you ever read a book or watched a movie where the hero or the heroine never left the couch? They just sat there, never taking action. Well, it sounds pretty boring and relatively non-eventful. And you probably change the channel or just never finish that book. So let me ask you, is this your story? Is your own story an action, action adventure, adventure, a romance, romance, a Stephen King novel, or Dr. Zeus? Real or imagined, your answers give your life a meaning of sorts. You know, my greatest challenges in leading businesses and the people they employ is leading by example. You know, it's easy to lead. It's easy for me to tell you or them what to do, and it's much harder for me to do it myself, to consistently be held to lead by example. But I tell you this, my friends, it's easier to tell a story than to live a story. Where most people go through life just telling a story. Because of that, they lose the moral authority because they lose authenticity, because there's poor strength from the message within, all because they're just telling a story. Think of it like this. To tell a story, it has to be in the second or third person. To live a story, it has to be in the first person. To live a story is for me to say, this is not what I'm sharing with you, this is what I've experienced. This is what I've done. This is what I felt because I am in the story. We don't want you ever to read your story. We want you to write your story. We definitely don't ever want somebody else to tell you your story because they will. We want you to flesh out and live your story because you say it's a beautiful thing. Because once you understand that the only gift that you have to offer others is you. So please understand, as we're going through this process, that the best you is what the world needs to see. It's what the world needs to hear. You'll understand today that the reason that your worst, you are your worst enemy is because you're the only one, the only one that can destroy yourself and not be the person that the universe created you to become. Instead of that, learn to embrace love and care and believe and build yourself. Doing this now you're giving the world what the world deserves, which is the very best of you. So welcome everybody. 
to Hacking the Infinity Matrix, episode 94. The past does not have to be your story, unless you choose it to be. We are Gary and Ross, and every week we stream content that we hope you'll take and implement in order to hack the Infinity Matrix so that it serves you instead of you serving it. If you like our content, we invite you back every week. If this is your first time here, uh, welcome. It's always a pleasure to welcome you into our community. So let's find out where everyone's tuning in from and give us some uh, give some of those that are late stragglers a chance to jump on uh, before we dive into the content. And I see, um, hey, Reina, how are you doing? Hey. I haven't seen you in a while. And the Gut Loving Life is from Brighton, England. So tell us in the comments what city, what country you're in, you're here from listening, tuning in to, and also, if it's your first time, uh, give us a hashtag first time, if this is your first time joining us, uh, so we can kind of take a look and see and well properly welcome you into the community as you jump on. And that's also if you're listening to the replay as well, same thing. There we go. We got a bunch of you jumping in. Hi, hi. Sarasota, mm -hmm. Florida. Awesome. Mm -hmm. Keep Ireland. Way to go. Keep them coming right. in. Global reach. Love to see that. Okay, so um, if this is your first time joining us, hey, where the heck have you been? <laughs> we, we, we are creeping up on almost 100 weekly live streams um, here waiting for you, and we are happy that you're here. Now that you're here, we hope that you'll stay, come back often. Actually, a good way to uh, make sure you don't miss anything in, uh, is to join our Facebook private group if you're not already in there. We have over 8,500 8, uh, members, and it's free to join. So uh, it's for those of you who are committed to implementing what uh, those that are committed to implementing what they learn and learn from what they implement. So join us if you're not going to be a bystander. Uh, go to the go to facebook.com forward slash groups forward slash the infinity matrix. Um, answer the three entry questions to be automatically accepted in the membership. And uh, that's it. Very simple, easy. And, and uh, it's also our, our way of weeding out those who aren't serious and also those those pesky spammers. That's the truth. That is the absolute truth. I'm going to go ahead and drop Better that in. Than never, yes. Whales. Oh, nice. Good. And we got some first timers. Great stuff. Awesome. There we go. Go so. Welcome to chapter one of the greatest story you'll ever create. The concept of what the story you're telling yourself is basically <clears throat> it's basically a filter that you can put every scenario in your daily life through it. Your story will create relevance to any given situation in your life. Your story creates the narrative and the perspective in which you see the world. Do you see the world of uh, as a world of wonder or a world of woe? Are you happening in the world or is the world happening to you? You see, your neurobiology is hardwired to make sense of your world as fast as it can. And if you can come up with a story that makes sense of it all, <clears throat> your brain will chemically reward you for that story. Whether it's accurate or not, it doesn't matter. Okay, it's not going to be great. It's just, you know, stop, go. Yes, that, no. So, um, so some of these stories are valid, and some of them are not. Some of them are partially valid and true, and justifiable, and some of them are not at all. Some of them are helpful to you and others simply don't serve you in the long run. For example, let's say uh, an incident happened to you five minutes ago. Your brain takes that incident as anxiety or fear and you immediately make up a story. What if she never likes me? Why didn't I do, go do the right thing? Oh, it was so terrible. And then all of a sudden you're working out the whole narrative. Now, here's the rug. Pay attention. This is going to blow your mind. How you treat, how you treat them 
whoever you interacted with, the next time you see him is off the narrative that you just created five minutes ago. Wow, that was easy to bring things to itself. And then it does it like the it does its ever ready bunny thing, you know, it just keeps going and going and going and on and on and on. And you let it because you don't really understand the process. So how do you make sure that the story that you're telling yourself is in alignment with what actually did happen? Well, the idea is that the first thing you have to do when you get a heightened emotional feeling from, uh, from an unexpected look or a comment or an event, and that triggers that internal reaction, is to simply acknowledge a button has been pushed. Something emotional is happening and you're reacting to it. And then be willing to get curious about what it is. So instead of immediately going to your crazy place, acknowledge that you are emotionally hooked around something. Honestly, admitting you don't know what just happened, but you're feeling stressed out about it. And for some reason, it hurt your feelings or something that, that you need to, well, it is something that you need to figure out. So you see, so much of what we experience throughout our lives is a story that we created in our mind. Now we, Gary and I, we ask you during these situations to observe, interpret, and respond. And this allows a few things to happen. One, it gives pause. And then two, you begin to question the situation. And then three, you can now make a rational response. And then doesn't that just on an overall sound better than the paranoia and anxiety that we most, most of us have? Then the next time this happens, <laughs> uh, yes, there will be a next time. Your new learned response will supersede your old quick reactionary habit. So you see, we're never really taught about our emotions and nor are people curious about how emotions work. It's believed that they are what they are. Consequences be damned, it's what I feel, what people will say. But emotions generally are followed by actions. And if you can't maintain a grasp on the emotion, how are you expected to handle the consequence of the action? And this brings to mind, you know, the term road rage. Okay. It is a trigger and then a reaction. And then generally it's going to be regret. When you're able to hold yourselves responsible for the way that you feel and the way that you view everything, things just, they just get easier. And that starts by noticing the dialogue and the narrative within your own mind. Think of it like this. A person places themselves in this imaginary box of limitations. That box contains unconscious beliefs attached to some past experience or events. And its only purpose is to prevent you from truly changing or growing or excelling in any way. Do you know what's in your box? Do you know what unconscious beliefs are inside your box? or the experiences that they're anchored to? Well, the good news is that the way those disempowering beliefs were created can be turned in on themselves. Because when an empowering declaration is spoken into existence, the correlating emotion conditions a person's brain and body into that belief. Those of you who have, uh, who have enrolled or listening that are in our Badass Lifestyle program, you know exactly what I'm talking about. It's actually a very simple formula. The stronger the emotion. Well, 
They all froze on us. No, Russ, you are frozen. Frozen, frozen, frozen. Let me just let him know here. Give us a second. We got some technical difficulties. Be patient with us, please. So while he sorts that out, um, you know, if you think about, you know, the, oh, yeah, he's coming back. He's going to have to join back in. All right. Sorry, guys. We're just, uh, I think he lost his connection or something. But we'll be right back. So if you think of that imaginary box of limitations uh, that Ross was talking about, in that box of limitations, you know, we, we've learned or we've been taught of, you know, certain things mean this and they mean that or should mean this and should mean that. And we take that and we add that as a part of our story. Okay, the story we tell ourselves, tell ourselves, and the story we tell others, to uh, to really confirm or justify or even clar clarify the reality we're experiencing. All right, and let me just take a look one second. I'm just making sure. Sorry, I am just checking in on Ross here. I don't know if he knows he's frozen because <laughs> he's not responding. Maybe he's still talking to you guys. <laughs> um, maybe you're hearing him on another stream of reality and uh, enjoying what it is he had to say there. So to think about, you know, those conscious and unconscious beliefs that we've established over the years and and I say conscious and unconscious because there are belief systems that you're conscious of and you develop a story to reinforce, to support, to justify, to um to to protect, right, in many ways. And we we wrap a story around that so that it, it has meaning to us. Right. And, uh, you know, so what we want you to think about is how often do you look at those belief systems, those stories, those uh, those things that have become unconscious in emotion and action over the years? And if you are not putting any conscious attention on it, then the ability to create shifts or change very difficult, right? Because if, you, if you're not aware of it, then you're just not aware of it. It just happens automatically, okay? But when it does come to awareness, it's important to understand that you do have choice. You, you have the power and the ability to do something different, all right? Let me just make sure that he is not trying to pop in on this end here. Once again, thanks everybody for being patient with the tech stuff. I'm just messing again. Anyway. Joining us back. So the formula, right? The formula, the stronger your emotion that you feel uh, the more you remember the thought, the more you you latch onto it, the more um, that the, the neural connections definitely in the brain get wired together, right? So the uh, the the if you don't feel you have control over those emotions, then those connections are just happening on their own, right? So the more you remember the thought, the more you get that repetition going. Uh, the more it becomes a declaration of your reality as opposed to just an idea or a concept or 
uh, it, it becomes more into reality, right? The more we, we, we turn it into a story that has substance, okay? And the and then it, it, it when when we give it that conscious story, then the conscious mind then starts to take on and and adapt that because one of the one of the easiest and most streamlined ways to communicate to your unconscious mind is through metaphors and stories. So if we're telling ourselves our own stories, we're actually communicating to our unconscious mind and creating a form of hypnosis. Okay. And when you maintain that state and that story and that message over time, right, the, uh, that state of being based on that story, the more you do it, the more those types of such thoughts and feelings also become automatic and unconscious and build on it. And it builds a whole history to go along with that story. Okay, he says he thinks the snow took out his internet. All right, well, then you guys just got me for the rest of the time. All right. So the, you know, the, to to just simply think you have to say, uh, it was, think what you have to say in is to change those subconscious beliefs. There's so much to it, right? So that's why we said just don't do it, just doing just an affirmation. Uh, oh, he's back in. There we go. You're back. You're back. Ross was missed by all. Hashtag Ross. If you miss Ross, hashtag Ross. Drop a hashtag Ross. Now we don't know how long uh, this is gonna last. Uh, oh no! Just... All right. So you left off at talking about the the simple formula there, Ross. The simple formula, not the complicated yeah. one. Not the, this. The very simple formula, not that simple, <laughs> but the very simple formula. Okay, so let's talk about that. So. Here's how the, the simple formula works, that the stronger the emotion the person feels, the more they remember the thought. And the more that they remember the thought, the more it becomes a declaration of the reality. This is the process that programs you into subconscious beliefs, positive or negative. That's how it works. And when we maintain that state of being over time, the more we do it the more such thoughts and feelings become automatic and unconscious. We, Gary and I, just simply think you should have a say in what those subconscious beliefs are and their effects on your life. Then you choose, which one do you prefer? When this process of affirming thoughts happens enough times, the almost, it's like a, it's almost like a Pavolin uh, response Be and it becomes a person's identity because now the brain and the body have been, are conditioned to respond to it's seemingly an irresistible state of being. The person is essentially declaring to themselves and the world, this is the way I identify as myself. And the reality is that they, they've conditioned themselves over and over with a stimulus and response, an image and an emotion and a thought and a feeling. So for many, the result is that every time they find themselves in a public situation where they had to excel, the voice in their head said, I have specific problems that keep me from fulfilling my true dreams and desires. And then that becomes their declaration. What we propose is for you to actually think that there is a possibility that you could achieve those true dreams and desires that you have. Writing the chapter of now in real time as it plays out. <laughs> all happening because you are now consciously aware of that, that thought. And when you become aware of how you speak your story, you'll pay more attention to how you act in your story. And if you fully recognize those feelings in your body and in your heart and in your mind, they will affect how you think, 
act and feel, and this becomes a new, better communication with the infinity matrix. Your vibration increases. Your clarity increases. So what if you started sharing your story with your friends, your spouse, and your, your kids? What if? Like how an athlete practices over and over to be the best. You rehearsed your story in your mind enough times with the thought that your true dreams and desire simply had to happen now. And then if you started expecting that they would happen, would you not then understand that replacing thoughts of unworthiness and insecurity with the feeling of confidence and self-satisfaction, with trust in a greater level of empowerment? Isn't this a better story? So I'll break it down. It's a simple plan. I'll put this in, in, in the, uh, um, the comments. Here's how it is. I'm breaking this real down. This is a summary. A new thought leads to a new choice, which endorses a new action, which will create a new experience, which will lead to a new feeling, generating your new reality. Yeah, and he made it through the stream. Ooh, way to go, Ross. <laughs> and who doesn't love a good story, right? Who doesn't love a great story? <laughs> really? And That's you know, the, the you know, I started off by by mentioning the past does not equal the future, right? So you've got the past. And you've got the future. And so when I say the past does not equal the future, we need to look at how could it possibly, right? Yet a lot of people think that, you know, they're, they keep re recreating their past, right? It keeps over. It seems that way, all right? Good, bad, or indifferent. They seem, they feel like they're, they're keep recreating it. But how could that be possible when there's always a steady stream of presence unwrapping in between your past and your future? Right. For for me to explain what I mean, I need to share a story with you of an event that happened to me when I was younger. OK, many years ago, many, many years ago, uh, <laughs> back at the beginning of time. Um, I, air. Yeah. <laughs> I went on a uh, four day retreat that's. The, 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 the sole purpose of the retreat was to facilitate a process that would help me and others there, obviously, have a direct experience of who I am, right? Each individual having that direct experience for themselves or what's called an enlightenment experience. I went into the retreat fully open to whatever I was meant to experience and trust the process, right? Without giving away all the details, basically we were to meditate on one question and one question over and over and over again in what's called an open dyad communication for about 10 to 12 40-minute sessions every day, okay? 10 to 12, 40, that's, we're talking about 11 hours, okay? Every day until we get the direct experience of that question. No other questions was supposed to be posed or con con contemplated. That's the one you focused on if that's the direct experience you were going for. Okay, well, day one was grueling for just about all of the participants, including me. Okay, I found myself digging up memories and thoughts and ideas and stories about myself from the past, only to realize that none of, of that was who I am. Right, the instructions from the trainers was to continue the contemplation, to continue to contemplate the question even when we're not doing the dyad with the other persons, right? So that means when eating, when showering, when going for a walk, and yes, even into your sleep, to continue to contemplate who am I and get a direct experience of that. Well, day two, um, it, you know, made day one seem like it was a piece of cake, right? It only got worse. <laughs> I literally thought I was going to lose my mind. I thought I was going mad at points, okay? And 
And this time I was conjuring up all sorts of feelings and even esoteric phrases that I had heard from teachers and gurus and read in books over the years again and again and again. And then only to realize that none of that was a direct experience of who I am. And then day three, day three, I had a breakthrough. <clears throat> and what I could confidently, it was what I would confidently say was a direct experience of the truth of who I am. And the moment it occurred for me, I instantly feel, I instantly felt this pull between the past and the future, like this, this, this cosmic tug of war between the past and the future, right? Except there was no, no war going on. It was just this tugging between, am I in the past? Am I in the present? Like this back and forth. I was doing my best to maintain the purity of the present moment and realized that, 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 uh, that time just uh, you know, didn't allow for that to happen because it was always moving. Right. There was always it was just my the how much my past experiences were influencing who I thought was constant. Right. The the how much that those past experiences influenced who I thought I was in the moment was constantly there. But even more importantly, I realized how the how the past projected a future beyond my present Right. So if I'm here in the present and I've got the past over here, it, it, it projected over that into the future. Right. Some some idea, some thought, some concept, it, it, it projected a future beyond my present for me to move into. OK, to give me some some level of certainty, some level of congruency, some level of consistency, okay? So it was like it skipped over the truth of the moment to begin planning the potential of the future, okay? Hopefully that makes sense to you. So I kept wondering, what if being in the now was like experiencing one frame of a movie at a time? Just one frame at a time. Because, you know, when you, I mean, hopefully everybody understands here. When you're watching a movie, right, it's just a bunch of frames put together to create the idea that there's there's stuff going on. Okay? And and, and so the the it's it's still, you can break it down to frame by frame. Right? What if, okay, our experience of reality was like that? To be in the now, you have to be one frame at a time. And while in that frame, what if I was so unconcerned about the previous frame and totally stayed immersed in the infinity of the choices in that current frame? Because it could go so many different ways, right? If, we, if we're looking at frame by frame, right? There's so many options and possibilities where things could turn. And so if I could totally stay immersed in the infinity of choices, then all I'd be left with is the truth of who I am and the potential of who I could become. But here's the thing, okay? The intoxication of the past, okay? And the insistence of the future doesn't let up. So the more I tried to remain in the middle of the, in, in, that, in, in that single frame, the more difficult it was to experience the truth of who I am. Because again, there's, there's these forces going on, okay? Which all comes full circle to what we now call the infinity matrix, okay? The infinity matrix, you have your external matrix, the world that you see outside of you or, or perceived to be outside of you right, which is a representation of your past ideas, thoughts, memories, and experiences. Then you have your internal matrix, which has all of those, right, has all those past ideas, thoughts, memories as well, and experiences. 
And it also has the ability to consider the infinite choices of your potential future. Okay. And where you exist is smack dab in the middle. Okay. A place we call your choice convergence point or CCP you'll hear us talk about in, in previous streams. Okay. Your choice convergence point is the point where all possible infinite choices are birthed over and over and over again in an infinite loop. And then you get to choose what your future will be from those choices. And science now tells us, science now tells us that the past we think we have is not really accurate and that it is made up in the moment to justify and verify what we call this moment of reality. Yeah, it seems like it is real. I get it, right? It does seem like it's real, that there's a real history, there's a real past, okay? But you actually had, it seems like you actually had that past, but you, in reality, you might be at the very least having fragments of truth for the purpose on having linear continuity. So basically, we are living in that one frame and making up the past and the future potentials as we go. Okay? But if you don't know, if you, if you don't know that's how you're doing it, then you can feel as though, well, that's just the way it is, right? Like you just throw your hands up. It's just the way it is. And what you do, what you've done and who you become is all a matter of fate. Like you have no choice or control over how something from your perceived past has impact on you today or will in the future. So think of it like being in a uh, a dream where you become lucid, okay? And w w w in the dream, what you need to get into a lucid dream is you need something, some cue that lets you know it's a dream. So within the dream, you're it's almost like you're waking up in the dream, right? Which then lets you question what you're experiencing. And then even start to test out your abilities to begin playing in the dream with the rules and the laws of the dream. And once you become lucid in the dream, it can't go back to being just a dream. Once you realize that you do and can control your life narrative, you can't go back to living the fiction the way that it was. Not the same way. Instead, you just keep getting better and better at writing your own nonfiction fiction based on your moment-to-moment -moment truths. Okay? So if you think about it, it's even hidden in our, uh, hidden but not hidden, in our language. You know, we've done a few streams on this in the past about the words used in the language that we, the, and, and words and language and power of them. But, you know, have you heard the phrase, you can only live in the present moment, right? Or even as, as, as um, uh, you know, Ross had said a little earlier today, um, in, I can't remember exactly what the, the phrasing was around, but it was something about being in the, in, in the real time, right? Or in that moment, that person had the presence of mind to do the right thing. Again, so let's look at the languaging in that, right? So in the present moment, unfolding, unwrapping gifts of possibilities in the moment, right? The real time, a movie reel, reel has, it's, it's ongoing. There's frame after frame after frame. So time has this frame after frame after frame after frame. Okay. Or that person had the presence of mind. So the moment to moment unfolding of possibilities again. Right, meaning that each moment is just an ongoing stream of presence that are unwrapping as life experiences. 
So again, I go back. If in the present moment, there's a steady stream of presence being unwrapped to generate brand new reality experiences, that means from this moment to the next, change has occurred. And if change is always occurring in our moment of truth, then what and who you are is always changing. So that makes it impossible for the past to equal the future. Right? For your past to be the truth of your story. Unless you're making choices to allow it to play out like a reoccurring dream. But did you know that even reoccurring dreams are never the same? If you pay attention to the details, you'll notice something or some things change, alter, distort, or are deleted every time. It's never the same. There's, there's a theme that goes along with the reoccurring dream, but the components are never the same. And even the theme will slightly shift as well. Okay? so. How you live any kind, how do you, with, with that knowledge, right? So knowing that we're constantly changing and, um, and, and the future is not fully set and the past is not really real. How do you live any kind of functional life <laughs> if all you are is changing all the time? Well, this is where the metaphor of a life story comes into play. You see, the key here is to connect with what you believe to be your true authentic self, first and foremost. Okay, and again, for those of you that don't know, for us, self, the word self is an acronym for spiritually evolving life force, right? So your true authentic self. And from that place, determine a possible life theme that you'd like to live out. And there's an endless amount of them, right? Here's just a few. Theme of being the protector, going through life, feeling it's their mission to protect people, places, or things. Okay, that's a theme that someone can run out in their life, right? They can, they can play that out. Or the theme of being the victim, right? Going through life and, and placing themselves in situations where everything is happening to them. Or the theme of always searching for love, going through life and feeling like they just can't find the right soul mate no matter what they do. And that yearning is more important than the actual getting of it. So that's the story they play, right? Or the theme of living in divine connection. Trusting in a higher plan, higher plan and purpose, they just go with the flow. And somehow, things keep working out for them. And I could go on and on with different themes. You, you understand, if you look at it, you are currently living a life theme right now. Okay? If you look back over your past and you start to notice the patterns, it will become clear what that theme is that you've been living out. And if you don't like the theme that you got stuck into, because many times that's what happened, we just kind of fall into them, okay? You were, uh, based on life experiences, circumstance, situations, you, you, you make the decision that that's the theme that you're going to be a part of and play out, okay? You can change the theme if you don't like what you got stuck with, stuck into. Okay, you can find one that resonates more with your truth and start from there. And once you have the theme, then you need to gather all the elements of the story that would support that theme. This is how you've done it anyway. So I'm just giving you, breaking it down for you. Okay, it's to create a new story if you want or an enhanced story if you want. 
okay? Because some of you, life's going great and you and, and it's just about getting better with it. Well, understanding what that theme is, then gathering all the elements of the story that would support that, that new enhanced or transformed theme. Elements that would confirm, verify, justify that theme story. And the way you do that is you start to reflect on the sentences you use on a day-to-day uh, day -day basis throughout your day-to-day -day life to tell the story you're living now, right? What's the stories? What's, this, what's the sentences you're using to tell that story? Start dissecting those sentences that are, that are, not, um, that are not conducive to empowerment and choice. And break down the structure of those sentences to understand if and how they are placing things into your future or digging them up from the past. And then within those sentences, you will begin to notice a repetition of certain phrases that you adopted growing up or invented at some point. And they become self-imposed positive and negative affirmations or declarations of your reality. And these phrases can, can present predictive behaviors and outcomes. And if you really want to have massive power and transformation in your stories, then within those phrases, within those sentences, and those stories, begin contemplating the specific words you use on a daily basis to formulate and sustain that life theme. And doing this, uh, doing this process is one of the most powerful ways to create deep quantum level transformations. And in fact, it's ultimately what we teach through our signature program called the Infinity Process that we've talked about time and time again. Okay, there are a few more elements, but what I've shared today, when applied, is it, it can be one of the super more powerful processes that you could do for yourself and is more powerful than 80% of the coaching workshops and seminars trainings that are on the market today. All right. So if you'd like to get your get more hands on in the process of writing and rewriting your life story, we do have a master lab training on December 29th. If you'd like to get information, more information on how you can get registered and join us, type hashtag story time in the comments, hashtag story time in the comments. One of us will reach out to you and share the details. That's hashtag story time. Okay. And so keep in mind, okay, that your story is you. Okay. It's made up of all the where's, the what's, the when's, and the why's of your previous chapters, and all the where's, the what's, the when's, and the why's of your next chapters, and the struggle, and the struggle, and the dynamics of how those two play with the you in the middle, okay, with the you in the middle that comes from a place of infinite choice. Okay, that that formulates a sense of reality. Right. So the next time you declare or state your your state of being by thinking a thought or 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 stating something uh, and, and experiencing a feeling with the intensity and the equivalent emotion. Stating that, you know, I uh, as uh, this is I am this or I have that or I will do that. Understand that when you're using your words, your languaging, whether it's in a words, statements or sentences. You are either. Declaring the reality you're stepping, you're living or you're invoking the reality you're stepping into. Right. So you're either declaring the that you're you're owning the truth of the story, or you are writing the next chapter that you're going to step into, or the next page. All right. So if you like the content that we are teaching on these uh, Wednesday on these Thursdays, 
Um, please come back and join us next Thursday. We've got a really another another really great training. Same time, same place. Uh, please do come back and join us. And also, you can join our private group, the Infinity Matrix. We shared the link earlier. Uh, just answer the three simple questions. And you can also look at YouTube. Our handle is at Infinity Matrix, at Infinity Matrix on YouTube. And you'll see all our three years of live streams, uh, infinite wisdom interview series, and much more that we've got on there. Okay. So that's our stream for this week, everyone. Thanks for attending and, uh, and, and dealing with all the techie stuff that has gone on. We appreciate you being here and sticking around. Uh, until next time, we dare you to be exceptional. And the only way to do that is to implement what you learn and learn from what you implement. Be well, everyone. Thanks. And we'll talk to you next week. Bye-bye. So we truly hope you enjoyed this latest live stream. Each week, we bring you the best in cutting edge techniques and processes to help you better yourself and create the reality you desire. In order to stay notified for more live streams like this, as well as any upcoming interviews, master labs, or time clips, be sure to click the like button and ring that bell. As a matter of fact, you might be ready to step things up for yourself. You see, everything and everyone you've been exposed to in our live streams all have one thing in common. They've harnessed their own potential, claimed their badass self, raised their game, and leveled up. Whether it be in business, personal, romantic, for whatever dimension of life you choose, there's always a next level. So we encourage you to rekindle your passion, your purpose, and spirit, and step it up, and register for our next free five-day badass challenge. The link is below, and we are excited to see you take a leap into a new reality that only you can imagine.